In this video, I'm going to run you through Notion charts and show you step by step how I've created all of these charts and added them to my Notion templates, including my LiveOS dashboard, so you can go ahead and do the exact same. And just before we dive in, just note that you can only use one chart on the free plan, so you'll have to upgrade to the plus plan if you want to use more. And if you duplicate someone's template with multiple charts while you're on the free plan, then only the first chart will load, so you will have to upgrade if you want to see the rest. The links to all of the templates shown in this video can be found in the description below and has been updated with the new Notion charts. And with that out of the way, let's start with the basic habit tracker and work our way up to the LiveOS dashboard. Alright, so the first chart that we're going to create is this one for the habit tracker. So as you can see here, we got our four database entries with habits. So you just mark these checkboxes as complete and it will update the progress bar. So 100%, 40, 60 and 40 and then this is showing here on this line chart. So in order to create the chart, it works just like any other view. So you can either create a new view by clicking on this button and selecting chart. You can also go to an existing view and you can change the layout to a chart view. And you can also go here and then just type in slash chart and create a linked view database for the chart. So for this habit tracker, I'm going to select the line chart and then here you want to connect it to your database. So in this case, it's going to be this habit tracker database. And if I just close out of this, you can see we got these four database entries here. And if you open up the database menu, then you have a bunch of customization options. So firstly, the X and the Y axis. So the X axis is the one at the bottom, Y axis is the one at the top. So for the X axis, usually it's going to be the date property. And in this case, I'm just gonna select day. If you have more database entries, then you would want to select week or month, otherwise it's gonna be a lot. But in this case, I just have four, I'm just gonna select day. Oops, uh, let's just select day. And then here for the Y axis, you want to then choose what you want to show. So in this case, it's going to be the progress bar. So I want to show the progress bar and then the sum. And then this way it will show all of them. So as you can see here, we got the values in our chart. Now, as you can see, there's more options, so we can change how we want to sort it from new to old or old to new. And depending on the property, you can also have advanced filters, which we'll get to later. You can omit zero values. So this will just hide all the database entries that does not have any values. And then here for the Y axis, you can group it. So we can group this according to a specific property. In this case, it's not really gonna make sense, but we'll get to this as well. And you can select cumulative, so it will just show the total like increasing over time but in this case it also does not make sense but yeah you do have these options and then for the other charts you have different like options and settings that you can change for them but for this one we're just going to keep it online chart and then here we're going to go to style so here for the color we can go ahead and change the color we can also set it on auto and colorful which is not really going to make sense for this this would be more for the pie chart but for this one, we're just going to select red and then we're going to go to more style options. And this is where you can change the height. So you can make it small. You can make it super large like this. I'm just going to keep it medium and then the grid line. So you can choose what you want to show. So we can show the vertical ones, the horizontal ones. We can show both or we can show none at all. And then for the axis name, you can choose if you want the name to show. So here it will show date. And on the Y axis, it will show progress bar. You can show both of them and you can also hide both of them. I'm just gonna hide them. And then here you can toggle on whether or not this needs to be a smooth line, like this one here at the bottom. So I'm gonna turn this on. You can untoggle the gradient area. So it will just hide the gradient. You can remove the legend, which in this case we would want to remove it because it's just gonna be one. It's just gonna be the date property. This is more for if you are using the grouping option or if you're using a pie chart and then also data labels, which are the actual values that is being displayed on each of the database entries. So this is a linked view database, which is why we can create the source. And if I just go here into this one and add a chart. So this is me adding a chart on this dynamic habit tracker database. And here you can see we don't have the source option because it's not a linked view database. But if we go ahead and click on this, click on copy to linked view, and then paste it here at the bottom to create a linked view database. Now we do have the source option and we can change this to whatever database we want, which 
is what we've done here. So this is just relating to that dynamic Habitat database. And then we also have the filter. So you can, for example, filter this to where the date is this current year. You can obviously click on this as well to filter it. And then here at the bottom, this is a pretty cool option. So you can save the chart. So whatever you see, you can just export it as a PNG. You can change the background color or just make it transparent. And yeah, this is really useful if you want to share data and insights with someone on your team or just someone else. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty cool option. And then you also have the standard view options, which is to lock the views, copy the link, and also to duplicate it. And in case you're wondering how I got this box around the chart, it is just a callout box. And then here you just want to type in the name. So I'm just gonna use growth. And then you just wanna drag and drop your database inside. You want to click on the database menu, go to color, and then just change this to the default background. And then just make your text bold and underline it as well as change the text color. You can add an icon, so I'm just gonna choose this one. And what you can also do is you can rename your chart and you can just add a space and you can also change the icon if you want. But yeah, that basically just removes the name here, which makes this look a lot cleaner. All right, so the next chart that we're going to be creating is going to be inside of our macro tracker, which is inside the LifeWise dashboard. And here we are tracking our macros. So on this calendar view, as you can see, we got these database entries that shows the total amount of calories, protein, carbs, and fats that we've been eating. And this chart shows the total calories for each day. So yeah, as you can see, this is a bar chart and this is on this database view. So in order to create this, all you wanna do is just click on this plus click on add chart, and then I'm just going to select this bar chart. And then for the X axis, this is going to be again the date property. In this case, I'm going to select day, but if you have more database entries, you might want to select week. And then for the Y axis, we, we can either choose protein, carbs, fats, whatever you want, but calories are more than likely the one that you would want to look at. And then here, we can also change the color. So I just changed the color to white, which is just colorless and yeah that's pretty much all i did for this one and here you can again change the name you can also hide the database title and you can play around you can add filters and sorts but it does not have to be complicated like that's literally it for this one because that's all you need to see so yeah that's a quick and easy way to just visually see what you got going on here i do have the progress bars so you can see on the calendar your total progress you can see it every week. And then this is obviously a view for today, but this is just a nice way to just visually see your progress for your macros. And if you want to, you can also change this to a horizontal bar chart, which is literally the exact same as the vertical one. The only difference is obviously the X and the Y axis settings are switched. So yeah, these two are pretty much the exact same. And I'm not gonna show how to create this one because yeah, <laughs> there's the exact same. All right, now we're getting into the more exciting charts, which is going to be for our budget tracker. So for the finance hacker, also inside of the LifeWise dashboard, here we have three charts. So we have one that shows the total profit over the year. We have another one that shows this month's income and then the income sources, and then also the same for the expense sources. And if you wanna see a walkthrough of this budget tracker, then just check out the video in the card above and the link to this template is also in the description below. All right, so for this chart, all you wanna do is just create a linked view. So I just selected line chart and then connect it to my finance record database. And then all I'm going to do is just drag and drop it here. So into this column. And then for this chart, I am going to rename this view to profit and I'm going to change the icon to this one. And then for the x-axis, this is going to be the date property, but the week one. So I wanna see it by the week. And the y-axis is going to be profit. So this is going to be the sum of the total profit. And then for the styling options, all I did is just turn on the smooth line. So it looks like this. And then for the color, I'm going to select green. And I'm also, I want to hide this. So this label, so I'm just going to turn off legend. And yeah, you can obviously change this however you want. I'm just showing what I did. And you can also filter this. So if it's in the new year, you can then filter it to only show your current year. And yeah, that's essentially this first view of this finance tracker database. And then what I'm also going to do is just go to access name and then show both of them. And yeah, that's pretty much all I did for this first chart. And now let's create the other two, which are going to be pie charts. So I'm just going to add a new view, select the chart one. And then here again, this is a linked view. So you want to select the source, 
this is going to be our finance tracker and then here I'm just going to add in income and then just this plus icon and then I want to select this donut and then the way this pie chart works is you want to select what it's calculating and then also what it's showing so as you can see here it doesn't have x and y axes it is just the data so what do you want to show and what each of these slices represents like the value so in this case for the income I want to show the income sources so it will show the different income sources and then each slice needs to show the total so I want to see the sum of the income property like that so it will now show the different slices is going to be the sources different sources slices and then the total value of each of those slices and then because it's income I'm also just going to change the color to green and you can like you can leave it colorful this also makes sense because then you can clearly see the different sources but I like the green and for the style options you can here for data labels you can choose whether or not you only want to show the amount so in this case the actual dollar amount you can show the name here and then you can hide these and you can also show the name and the value and you can hide the legend here at the bottom if you want but I'm just going to keep it simple and go with the default option and then this is also optional but you can show or hide the total in the middle but I don't know why you would hide that in this case so I'm just going to leave that in now as it is currently it will show all of the income but we only want to see this month's income so I'm going to add a filter to the date property where the date property is relative to today and this month so this way it will only show this month's total earnings and how much we've made for each of our income sources and then for the expense sources we're going to do the exact same so I'm just going to duplicate this chart and then here I'm just going to add in expenses and also change the icon and then obviously we just want to change this from income sources to expense sources and then to the expense amount and then I'm also just going to change the color to red and yeah that's pretty much it for the income and expense sources so now I can go ahead and delete this database and we can now see our total month's expenses the income we can see the year's profit overview section here we have our budget tracker and also this overview section for each of the months so you can always go back and see how much you've spent or earned for each of your sources all right and now for the charts that's on the life voice dashboard itself so here we have our accountability partner for our habits that shows what habits we still need to complete and then we also now have a chart that shows the total habit progress over the year and then we also have this one which is your daily habit progress and also yeah this one which is for your bad habits so you have good habits and bad habits and then also the total for them and if you want to see a full walkthrough of this habit tracker and the LifeWise dashboard as well as the individual templates that's included then just check out the video that's linked in the card above or in the description below all right so for this chart we're going to go ahead and create a new chart view and we're going to link it to our months database so the days which you see here are linked to weeks weeks are linked to months months to quarters and quarters to years and in this one we're going to just select the line and for the x-axis we're not going to choose a date property we're going to choose the actual name because it's the month's database and for the sort as you can see it's currently alphabetical but we want to click on advanced so here by sort click on advanced and then we want to sort it by the month number so on the month's database we also have numbers so January as number one December as number 12 and this way we can sort this and then for the y-axis we don't want to show the good habits we want to show the total so the total monthly habit percentage and then just the value of them which is these blue ones that you see here and yeah that's pretty much it for the actual values of the chart and now it's just making it look nice so for color I'm going to change this to green style options I like the smooth lines and I'm going to remove the legend here at the bottom yeah that's pretty much it we can also filter this so I'm going to filter this to the year where the year is let's say 2024 if it's a different year if it's 2025 then you can just filter it to that year I'm just going to select 2024 and yeah that's pretty much it for the chart you can go ahead and rename this to remove the the name here so it's a little bit more minimal and we can go ahead and delete the other one because yeah we don't need two of them and yeah that's pretty much it for this chart all right and then for these two charts here at the bottom I'm going to go ahead and create a donut chart linked view 
And for this one, I'm going to select the Habit Tracker Dice database, which is the one that shows here at the top. And then for this first one, which is going to be for our good habits. So let me just add in this icon. I want to show the good habits. So here, so this will show all of our good habits. And then each slice is going to show the sum of the good habits percentage. So this will show the total that we've completed. And in this one, like this obviously does not make sense. So we want to filter this to where the date property is, and then we want to select today. So as you can see, today we're 25% done with our good habits, which is the habits we want to add to our life. And then here for color, we're just going to select this as green, and we actually want to show the name and value. So you can show both. I'm just actually going to choose the name, and we can hide the legend. Um, because the names shows here. Otherwise, you can do this the other way around. You can hide that and then just keep the legend here. But I actually like the name there. And then I'm going to hide the legend. And yeah, you can also play with the sizing. So we can make this small, you can make it medium, but I'm just gonna keep it like that. And then we're literally gonna do the exact same thing for the bad habits. So I'm just going to duplicate this chart and then just swap this around to the downwards one. And then we want to select the bad habits, which is the habits we want to remove from our life. Each slice is going to be the total bad habits percentage. And then this one we want to show as red. And yeah, this one also has the filter. And that's pretty much it when it comes to our habit tracker. Yeah, that's pretty much it for the charts for this LifeWise dashboard, which is mainly just in order to see how much you've done in terms of your habits. So yeah, you have this accountability partner. You have this chart, you have these two charts, all visually showing your progress. You have these ones with the progress bar, so there's no way that you can slack on your habits because <laughs> this is really like in your face. So yeah, that's it for the charts that I'm going to show in this video. I'll most likely create more videos on Notion charts, but yeah, the fastest way for you to learn charts is to just play around with them yourself and to just learn through doing, not through learning. So that's kind of the most important thing here. But yeah, that's a quick overview and a rundown on Notion charts. And hopefully this has given you some ideas of how you can use them in your own Notion dashboards and templates. And yeah, I hope this video was useful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.